Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard the Mayflower Garden for your cruise today. Hope everyone's having a nice day so far. As we leave the piers, we're required by law to give you a quick safety announcement. Because it's the literal shortest trip in the world, we're just popping over to the Waterloo and London IP. We're going to give you the safety announcement once we leave this pier. Okay, we're going to stay here for around five minutes, uh, get a few more passengers on the boat, and then we'll be heading one way uh, to Tower Pier. Okay. Use this opportunity right now to visit the facilities on board. Uh, toilets are downstairs at the back of the boat, a lovely bar downstairs as well. So sit back, relax, we'll be back in a few moments' time. Uh, heading towards the tower here. Thanks for listening so far. Cheers. Good afternoon, hello again ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the Mayflower Garden. As promised, I'm going to give you a quick safety announcement, nothing to worry about, it's just something we have to do by law. So this vessel has all of the necessary life-saving equipment on board, such as life rafts, life rings, life jackets, which all the crew have been fully trained to use. In the very unlikely event of an emergency, good luck. Now we do have to joke around, just sit back, relax, follow the instructions given to you by a uniform member of the crew. If you're still a bit nervous, the bar is open downstairs, but only for the next five minutes, okay? So I'll be quick if you want a drink, because Boris is shutting the bar soon. Now on board this boat, we have a little computer system that I can switch on. It's a company provided commentary. It sounds a bit like a robot and it points out some of the sights. But if you'd prefer, can stand here, join you for the trip, give you a bit of a live commentary, pass on some of the local knowledge we've picked up over the many years of working on the team. So does anyone want the automated computerised commentary? Anyone at all? You in the back there? Yeah, you can get off, that's alright. Anyone want the live commentary? Anyone at all? Yeah, a few of us on the top deck fancy that? Okay, we'll crack on with that, that sounds good to me. Just so you know, we're not professional commentators or guides or anything like that, we're professional members of this crew. So if I do get anything wrong, do remember to keep it to yourself, okay? We'll start with the first bridge that we go underneath. This is the Charing Cross Railway Bridge. I have a side up there. You've got the Jubilee and Hungerford walkways. Now it is said that if you can manage to get a little wave back from anyone on these walkways, it's said to bring you luck. So we'll get the captain to make a little bit of noise for us. There's no one on the bridge, never mind. Oh, there's a few people out there. Hello! Give us a wave, folks. Give us a wave. Hello. <sighs> Some more coming on this side. Hello. Nice one. Please don't throw anything. Thank you. That's not normally happens at this bridge. They like to throw things at the boat. But if they're waving, it keeps their hands a little bit occupied. So you're all done. 
This is actually the only place on our little trip where there is a railway line passing directly above and below us at the same time. 40 metres below you've got the Bakerloo line and above our heads the various uh, overground services which I'm sure uh, you can hear some of the tracks. As we push on through the bridge, over to the left over there, we've got the oldest thing we're going to see on our trip today. We've got Cleopatra's Needle, said to be older than the city of London itself, 3,500 years old, given to us for our assistance during the Battle of the River Nile, from a very thankful Egyptian government. Just behind that you'll see Shelmack House on the roof there, that is the largest clock face that you have seen or will see on your visit to London today. It's two foot larger than the ones on Big Ben behind us. Take a good look at that minute hand. That is 13 foot long. And it is so heavy, it takes a whole hour for it to go round once. It's massive. Only a few of you get that. Just next to that, you've got the white building with the green roof, very expensive, very famous hotel. That's the Savoy Hotel. I'm sure you recognise it from when you left it this morning. It's got great views of the River Thames. It actually costs £2,000 a night to stay in the roof part of that hotel, which does come complete with, to be fair, a full English breakfast with two sausages, apparently. This next bridge, we've got Waterloo Bridge sometimes called the Ladies Bridge because it was built during the Second World War by a predominantly female workforce. It's built out of a self-cleansing stone so when it rains it cleans the faces of this bridge. However, compare that to the underside. This part stays relatively dirty. That's where the rainwater cannot get to. It's also the longest bridge to, be, to span at the river in central London, standing at one quarter mile long, all the way across to well done, then. Just there to the left, behind what's left of the tree line there, nice looking building, Somerset House, built for the Dukes and Earls of Somerset. It used to hold all of the information for the births, marriages and deaths of everyone in the United Kingdom. It now has a fantastic open air cinema in the summer. They do a bit of an ice skating rink in the colder months. Throughout the year, plenty of exhibitions go on over there. Somerset House, if you want to look it up online. Okay. This pier to the left, this is Temple Pier. Right at the end there, you've got the black and white ship. That's called the Yacht at Temple Pier. It used to be the Queen's Royal Barge 50 odd years ago. It's now a permanent bar and restaurant open to the public. It used to be called the St. Catherine when it was in full operation all those years ago. Still on the same side, another nice looking ship, the large white one there, that's the HQS Wellington. Used to be part of the New Zealand Navy. It has now been donated to the Honourable Company of Master Mariners. In order to join, you must be a captain at sea for at least 25 years, making it one of the most exclusive and prestigious clubs uh, still active on the river today, that's for sure. Just towards the back of the ship, you'll see a small archway there. This is an old boundary line to the city of London. This boundary line lets us know we're about to leave the city of Westminster behind us and enter the City of London ahead. As we know, City of London, one of the smallest capital cities in the world at only 1.1 square miles. Now, I know you're not going to believe this one, ladies and gentlemen, but London has some of the world's best and premier beaches. Look there to the right. The South Bank Riviera. Beautiful sandy beaches, blue waters, blue skies. What more could you possibly ask? This is, of course, where they filmed Baywatch. True story, that one. A fantastic day out for you and the kids, playing in the polluted water too. Also on the right, we've got the Oxo Tower just there. Used to be a meat storage warehouse, but when Oxo took over, they wanted to include some sort of advertising signs on their building. 
However, it was illegal to do so at the time. They built the tower on the roof anyway, so the architect, he was taken to court. And he said, I did not realize that my circle and square windows would spell out the company's name. He got away with this. They've had free advertising there for 15 years. Now it is pretty much impossible not to notice we have this huge construction site going on on the banks of the Thames here to our left. It's all to do with the Tideway Tunnel Project. They are building a brand new sewage tunnel underneath London. It's going to take 10 years to fully complete with a £5 billion investment into this project. We've got about 15 of these sites scattered up and down the Thames. Now you know if you see any construction work going on uh, near the water, it's all to do with this uh, new tunnel under London. And if you're maybe wondering why it's going to take so long to complete the project, have a little look over there. Not a lot going on. It's like that every single day, I guarantee you. These next few bridges, they're very close together indeed. The first one is the Blackfriars Road Bridge. The second, the Blackfriars Railway Bridge. If you look to the top of the red columns on either side of this bridge, you'll see some small figurines of birds. Now on this side of the bridge, we have land going birds. And on the opposite side ahead, seagoing ones. That is because we used to believe that the fresh water and the seawater met underneath this bridge. We now know for sure it meets a lot further upriver behind us. And we are now travelling above brackish water, which is a mixture of the two. Fresh and salt water on this part of the these red pillars that you see either side of the boat now, this is what's left of the Alexandria railway bridge that used to stand here. It got taken down because the trains got a lot heavier, a lot more advanced over the years. They actually had to build this one, they had to convert this bridge uh, to replace the old one. This is the Blackfriars railway bridge, the most expensive bridge on the Thames, 500 million pounds to build and uh, to convert. All along the roof we've got solar panels going all the way across, they contribute to around 50% of the energy to this station. Just there to the left you've got the best view of St Paul's Cathedral. St Paul's is 365 feet high, easily remembered as one foot for every day of the year. Designed by Sir Christopher Wren and completed in 1711. Right above the dome there's a nice viewing platform next to the Whispering Gallery. Got some great views of London from up the top there. We recommend visiting St Paul's, that's for sure. The building with a tall chimney here to the right, the old Bankside Power Station is now the new Tate Modern Art Gallery. The most visited modern art gallery in the world. Over five million visitors every single year. They've got some weird and wonderful exhibitions. As you can see on the top of the building is free and open to all. Do we have any modern art fans on board the boat today? No one. That's probably why it's free. Okay. We've also got the Millennium Footbridge here or the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge as it's most commonly known. It got this nickname because it was opened at 12 o'clock by the Queen and closed at two o'clock by the Metropolitan Police Service because it was swaying so violently. The architect said on national television, there's nothing wrong with the way that I built my bridge. It is just the way Londoners walk. So that was his excuse for why it was moving around all over. Back over to the right, you've got the white circular building with the brown roof. That's the replica of Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. This building needed special planning permission because after the Great Fire of London of 1666, they placed a ban on thatched roofs because as we know, they're pretty flammable. You can actually still go in there today and watch one of Shakespeare's plays for a very reasonable five pounds. They do everything in the traditional manner and if you're into Shakespeare, uh, do go and have a look. 
Are we all enjoying the live commentary so far, folks? Yes, is it okay? Fantastic, I'll carry on then. That sounds good to me. The captain said it's good as well. <laughs> Here we go then. The next bridge we go underneath is the Southwark Road Bridge. It was built to relieve traffic pressure from the nearby London Bridge. However, it failed miserably. The reason for this, it uses too many back streets and back roads that not many Londoners can find it. Mostly used by commercial traffic, as I'm sure we will see, buses, lorries, vans, and that sort of thing. So not many locals really use uh, the summit road. You'll be able to see some chains hanging along the base of most of the bridges in London and most of the river wall. These chains will give you something to hold on to if you happen to fall in. Obviously we don't recommend this, but that is seriously why you see the chains scattered pretty much all over London. Just before this next bridge, on the right in the corner, we have a lovely little pub called the Anchor or the Anchor Tavern. There has been an establishment here for over 400 years. William Shakespeare himself would get changed in the attic before performing in his nearby Rose and Globe theatres. This is also the establishment where me and the captain will be visiting straight after work today, about seven o'clock, to carry out the very important, the crucial research. We do the research in there for this commentary that you're listening to. It takes hours and hours sometimes. It's very thirsty. We do all of this important research, especially for you lovely people. As we clear Cannon Street there, look to the right. Of course, that's the Shard or the Shard of Glass. It's over a thousand feet tall, goes up 95 stories. Inside you will find hotels, offices, restaurants, even a few apartments. The most expensive of these apartments will set you back at least 30 million pounds. Uh, so start saving now. The architect of the building, Lorenzo Piano, he did not, he did not accept the two million pound offer to him for his designs. He instead asked to be given one of those apartments. They said yes. Two years after construction, he sold his one for a small profit of 27 and a half million pounds. Clever boy. Right at the top there, there's a lovely open air viewing platform, nice little bar up there, a few stories below that, an indoor uh, viewing platform as well. This next bridge, London Bridge. You may have heard the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down. That is because we've had a few bridges to stand here over the last 2,000 years. One fell down, one burned down. One began to sink into the mud. The one that was sinking was sold to an American businessman. He actually shipped the bridge overseas, brick by brick, and rebuilt it in Lake Havasu, Arizona, where it still stands today. A lot of people think we make that up. That is 100% true. This one does disappear very quickly between the two grey buildings on the left, the tallest freestanding column in the world. 202 feet high, 311 steps all the way to the top. It's got the golden crown on top of it. It is simply called the Monument, and it's to commemorate the Great Fire of London. They think it started over there where, that's where it now stands. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I do often get asked many, many questions about this large blue glass building just here on the left. And to be honest with you all, I don't really know what it is. However, I have recently been told it is the headquarters of the Window Cleaning Association. Don't know how much truth is in that one, not much, I suspect. But just behind that, I've got a few funny names for some of the buildings over there. The first one, that's the Walkie Talkie Tower, or 20 Fenchurch Street. Right at the top there, you can see some people walking around. There's a fantastic sky garden right at the top, and viewing platform, which is free to go up. As long as you apply online, they will send you your tickets. You've got some nice uh, bars and restaurants up there as well. The next one along, that's the cheese grater. Looks a bit like a cheese grater. 
The next one is the scalpel. And perhaps the most famous, just coming into view now, that's the gherkin. So a few funny names uh, for some of those. Now do look very, very carefully for this next one, okay? Because it is camouflage. Here on the right you've got the C-35 HMS Belfast. Served plenty of action during the Second World War and Korean campaign. It's got nine decks, takes two to three hours to visit the entire ship. If you're into naval or maritime history, it's a perfect little place for you to go and explore. It's now a permanent museum here on the Thames an extension of the Imperial War Museum. It was actually also built in the same shipyard as the ill-fated Titanic, the Harland and Wharf shipyard in Belfast. So there we go ladies and gentlemen, look over there to the left, that's Tower Pier, that's our next stop. But we're not going to go right into the pier, what we're going to do, we're going to take you a little bit closer to Tower Bridge. Do a nice slow turn in front of it to the left. So get ready on the right hand side, you're going to get a great photo opportunity of Tower Bridge. Before we do that, we're going to first talk about the Tower of London over there on the left. Or the Bloody Tower, some people call it. Unfortunately, you can't quite see the bloody tower anymore because the bloody trees are in the bloody way. But it's been a few things over the years. It's been a royal mint, a monastery, an observatory, even the start of London Zoo. It now, of course, most famously holds the crown jewels for the Queen. It is most famous for being a prison and a place of execution. Have a look there along the river wall. You can see it says, entry to the traitor's gate there used to be a tunnel there it's been blocked off now and if you are found guilty of treason you'd be found guilty at the houses of parliament where we just came from brought here on a boat without a commentary taken through that tunnel into the center where they would remove your head with a blunt axe a bit grim in them days unfortunately don't let that put you off they don't do that anymore So there we go, as you can see, we're just waiting for some of the traffic to get out of the way and then we're gonna slowly turn the boat around to the left. So get ready on the right here for your uh, little fight. Now Tower Bridge is unique. It is unique because it's part bascule and part suspension. The bascule part is the center that can be opened up in 60 seconds to allow taller ships in and out of this area of the town. As we turn the boat, look at the top there, you've got the two walkways with a glass floor and a mirrored ceiling right in the middle. That's the Tower Bridge experience up there. There's a nice little museum, they show you how the bridge was built and how it all works. And of course they, you can take pictures of boats and people passing beneath you. The Tower Bridge experience. 